Greetings, greetings, beautiful people, and thank you so much for tuning in to today's Movement Medicine Morsel. We're going to spend a little bit of quality time with our shoulder blades, sometimes also called scapulae, and we're going to apply this to warrior one in yoga. So I'd like to introduce you, some of you may have met my assistant, Andy. Andy's going to help us with the scapula. This is Andy and Andy likes to wave hello to everybody. So if you don't mind turning around, Andy, let's show where are our shoulder blades. So you'll see these two flat triangular size bones, one on either side of the spine. And you may notice, I'll turn Andy a little bit, that the shoulder joint is in fact connected to a little socket that receives the ball of the upper arm in the shoulder blade on the outside. And then the shoulder blade is also connected to the collarbone. And the collarbone has a connection to the breastbone. So our shoulder girdle is made up on two sides of a curvy collarbone or clavicle, which then articulates or connects to the shoulder blade, which lies on the back sandwiched between muscle. It's not actually attached to the ribs, but it's held with muscle. And then the shoulder joint itself is right on the outside corner of the scapula. Pretty cool, right? All right, so the shoulder girdle has its own series of movements. Today, we're going to take a little look at what happens with the scapula. So because learning and absorption is aided by relaxation, let's begin by coming into our vertical alignment. So for this, we plant our feet, feel your feet, feel what they feel, sense them connected to the ground. Likewise, feel your sit bones, become aware of them. Awareness is very key. Notice what they feel. And then from here, rise up through the crown of the head, so there's a lightness and an elongation through your spine. And now the shoulders may have come up with that. So it's a perfect time to come to the shoulders. But one more piece in our vertical alignment with a sense of relaxation, just letting the collarbones be soft, letting the scapula slide down the spine, letting the upper arm bones have a little bit of weight. Let's rest our hands on our low belly and take a few smooth breaths. And if anybody tightened up at the idea of doing a little anatomy, just notice that and let it go. Breathing in through the nose and filling the belly. And exhale. Let everything out. Release, relax, and settle. Let your inhalation flow into you. And let your exhalation empty you. And a soft smile is always nice. So here we are, grounded, suspended, connected to earth and sky, relaxed and open. My hands are going to represent the shoulder blades for a moment, so you can probably imagine that these could be shoulder blades. So here are the movements of the shoulder blades, and you can do them along with me, feeling into your shoulder blades. Just take a moment, you can even palpate. Let's touch, it's quite easy to find the collar bones and follow them along. And then you'll find a place where you're not sure. You go along the edge of the collarbone, then it comes into some muscle. But if you keep walking around the back, you'll find that spine of the shoulder blade. You'll see on Andy, coming from the shoulder, there's a, a protuberance, a spine, a pointy ridge. And you can probably quite easily find that and now you're on your shoulder blade. And then maybe you can feel into that triangular bone. It all depends on the reach of your arms, but you've had a little visual and now you've had a little bit of an orientation in your own body. And please take a moment and as you breathe and continue your vertical alignment, see if you can sense into your shoulder blades, imagining those two flat, slightly curved triangular bones and now you can either lift your hands like me or you can just feel into your shoulder blades. So one of the actions that the shoulder blades 
can perform is rising up and that lifts everything. It lifts the outer corners of the collarbones. It lifts the upper arm bones. So here can the shoulders go up and then the shoulder blades descend. On the inhale, we squeeze the shoulders up and see if you can feel this action in the shoulder blades. We not, might not be feeling into that or thinking about them as we do this, but the shoulder blades are sliding up through their muscular sandwich, up the back and down the back. And let's do that one more time. Inhaling, lift the shoulder blades up and exhale, let them lower down and let them really rest. Okay, what else can the shoulder blades do? They can also slide away from the spine and they start to curve around a little bit into the upper back and they can also squeeze towards the spine. So let's try that together. I'll move back a little bit and turn sideways. So feel into your shoulder blades and as you exhale, let them glide away from the spine and that will naturally bring the top of the scapula and the collarbones a little bit forward. And on the inhale, lightly draw the shoulder blades towards the spine. That's going to draw the shoulder joints and the edges of the clavicles away from the center chest. Exhale, the shoulder blades glide away from the spine. Inhale, they gently squeeze into the spine. You may find that this fits very nicely with a cat and a dog. So let's do cat and dog. Let the whole spine be involved, but be exquisitely aware of what's happening with your shoulder blades. Exhaling, they glide away from the spine and inhaling, they draw towards the spine. And when something happens in the back body, it also happens in the front body, an opposite happens. So when we contract the back body to squeeze the shoulder blades, the front chest opens. When we slide the shoulder blades away, the back is wide and the chest narrows. So just a couple more flowing, holding lightly to the theory but sensing what you can of this in your body. Okay, so we've had elevation, depression, that's the technical terminology, elevation, depression, abduction, the shoulder blades are escaping from the center of the spine, adduction, they're adding themselves to the spine. So we've got four movements. Now, what happens when we lift the arms up overhead? The shoulder joint has to rise up. So pretend the shoulder joints are my pinky fingers. Here they are, the arms are down. Watch my pinky fingers. They rotate up. Look what's happening with the shoulder blades. They are lightly spinning on the spine. Now, I just wanna point out one more thing before we try this. Some of you may have noticed that Andy, unfortunately, has bolts holding his scapula to his spine or her spine, their spine. Andy is androgynous, skeleton androgynous. So sometimes we may feel as though our scapulae are glued to our spine. So these simple little exercises, which are anatomical movements and are also pawan muktasana, the freeing of the energy of the movement of the joints a style of yoga, a family of yoga poses. So let's see what that feels like. So as we lift our arms, imagine the shoulder blades rotating so that the shoulder joints can rise up. And of course, as we exhale and we're doing this slowly with control, the shoulder blades are rotating down. So you do it and you can watch my hands. This is what's happening with your shoulder blades as you lift your hands overhead. And this is what's happening with your shoulder blades as you lower your arms. Let's do it twice together. Inhale, reach up, being exquisitely aware of your shoulder blades. And as you exhale, gently lower. And you might find that this is pleasant to layer with a rounding of the spine and a little bit of a lifting tiny back bend 
extra vertical alignment on the inhale, and you might enjoy a little softening of the spine. Because let's face it, everything is connected. Feel how all of this fits beautifully with the breath. And as we move our arms, which are connected to our shoulder blades, there's a lovely massaging and stimulation that's happening to everything in our chest cavity and also in our neck because they're connected. So arm movements massage the lungs, the heart. And let's bring this to a close, coming to vertical. Now, a little tutorial before we come into playing with this in Warrior One, because what happens to a lot of us? We lift our arms up and the shoulders come up and they stay up. But now that you know about your scapulae, lift your arms up and see if you can feel the lift. In fact, exaggerate the lift up of your shoulder blades. And now very gently let your shoulder blades glide down your spine without disturbing the length of your neck. Now, in today's warrior, I'm going to invite you to use what I call the victory V, because this is a nice position of the arms. We can often come into uh, problems or challenges if we try to put the hands together. So basically, virtually everybody can have the arms up like this. If you have shoulder discomfort, you can be practicing with your arms gently in front. And if you can see, you can still lift your shoulder blades and lower them quite comfortably. Also connected to the neck. So let's take our arms up into what I call the victory V. And the palms are kind of facing each other and the hands are not behind you. This might feel good or you feel a lot, but that's extreme for our purposes. We want a nice vertical spine and the shoulders are actually designed so they hang just a little bit in front of the side seam, not back. Sometimes we move them back to extend our shoulders, but we're not going to do that today because it's a short session. So we've got a victory V, not too low, not a horizontal, but literally a V. And let's inhale, lift the shoulders way up. Keep the skull where it is and on a slow, sustained exhale, feel and visualize your shoulder blades gliding down. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, lifting up both shoulders, the shoulder blades, because the shoulders are going to move wherever the shoulder blades go. I have to get my, un my arms unwonked here. Shoulder blades glide up the back. Shoulder blades glide down the back. Shake out your hands a little bit, and I think we're ready to come and stand up. Of course, you can practice the upper body warrior if you want to stay seated. Absolutely. So find a comfortable place to stand. You won't see my feet today, but trust me, they are touching the ground. And feel your vertical alignment. And remember the shoulder blades just rest. They're resting like a shawl wrapped around you. And let's do a little bit of shaking just to loosen things up. Use some sound if you want. Hop a little bit. I'm leaving the balls of my feet on the floor, but I'm thumping my heels. We've had our arms up a lot. You don't have to take your arms up today unless you really want to, of course. Listen to your own body. Shimmy a little bit. Shake it all off. Release everything. And then a little bit of rotation, gently thinking about the belly button turning, and then releasing the back heel. So you're pivoting on the ball of the foot. Take a little look around you, refresh yourself. Breathe in, and then gently relax. I am going to readjust my camera because I do want you to see my feet. And we're going to come into a warrior. Let's start with the right foot in front and the left foot behind on an angle. So you want to be comfortable here and don't overturn out that back leg. I'm barely beyond parallel. I just want to be comfortable. That's what I'm interested in now. Comfort and steadiness, which is what the Yoga Sutras call for. So you might be in a longer warrior. You might be in a more upright warrior. So it's up to you 
where you want to place your feet. Now we haven't done a lot for the legs, so let's include lifting up and straightening on the inhale and finding that lunge on the exhale. At this point, the shoulder blades are just resting and place your hands wherever that allows you to let the shoulder blades come down. If you have your hands up too high, you may be hiking your shoulders anyways. So we're just feeling into the legs, giving them a nice stretch. And now stay in the lunge and exhale, press your palms back. On the inhale, sweep your fingertips down and through to the front, raising up. And now open your hands into that beautiful V. And let's inhale, lift the shoulder blades up and now lower them down. And again, lift the shoulder blades up. And the only thing that's moving is the shoulder blades are gliding down. Let the shoulder blades slightly squeeze towards one another. Don't overdo it. And let the upper chest lift, the throat open, and breathe smoothly and gently. Just enough pose so that you feel beautiful, strong, and open. And then look forward and lower the hands and straighten up. Let's come to the other side. Find your position, take a few moments, adjust yourself, you wanna be steady here, and then let your shoulder blades drop. So my hands are lower than my waist. If I have my hands, if I have my elbows out and my hands on my waist, you can see that's not a great position for my scapulae. So I think about sliding my shoulder blades down and letting my upper arm bones be heavy, they drop. So for me, it's a little bit more um, balanced to slide the hands down lower and draw the elbows back just a touch. So I'm giving you, you don't have to do it that way, but find a way that doesn't have you ginched up like this. The interesting thing is we want a tall spine, but we want a relaxed shoulder girdle. So lunging and inhaling coming up and continuing to lunge and inhale, straighten the front leg, Feel both legs working. Notice what you feel in the hips. And we're going to stay in the final lunge and release our hands, palms face back. Exhale, press the hands up and back. Inhale, brush down, forward, up. You can even lift your shoulder blades here to get that beautiful stretch. And then open the hands in a V and slide the shoulder blades down. Let them find their spot on the back. Very slight drawing towards the spine. And let that slight contraction of the upper back open up and support the opening of the chest and the throat. And make sure that this is comfortable. Don't overdo anything. Just find the right amount. The neck and throat are rising. The shoulder blades are melting down, sliding down the back. Victory, victorious warriors, we're able to face whatever comes our way with equanimity, stability, compassion, and looking forward, lowering the arms and stepping up and just circle a little bit, shake things out, see how that feels for you. And we'll finish by bending the knees, holding a ball of chi. On the inhalation, let all of that energy and that new information expand you. Maybe your shoulder blades are gliding away to reach the fingertips out. Now your shoulder blades rotate a little bit so that your palms turn up. And now your shoulder blades rotate up to lift your hands, touch your palms, collect the energy, and on the exhalation, feel the shoulder blades sliding down as you bring your prayer hands down to rest in front of the heart. The shoulder blades are calm, they're settled, you're breathing, you're smiling, and then finish by resting the hands over the low belly so that you feel more grounded. We did a lot of work in the upper spheres so let the fruits of that 
wisdom drop down so that you stay focused and grounded. Smile, breathe, feel your connection to suspension, to rooting, and feel hopefully a new relationship with your shoulder blades and shoulder girdle. So I thank you for your attention and joining in today for today's Movement Medicine Morsel, and we'll see you next time. Many blessings.